Personal chef, food photographer, food stylist, blogger. In my life, I've had a bit of success at all of them, but nobody has ever called me a gardener. Which is sad, really, because I love a good garden. I get so inspired when reading about First Lady Michelle Obama's White House kitchen garden. She gets right down in the dirt with school children helping out, and up pops just about every vegetable you can imagine. And me? I can't even keep a basil plant alive in a pot for more than a week. But what I lack in gardening skills, I make up for in friends. And the time has come for me to get a couple of tips from a couple of experts. After all, how hard can it be? My first stop, a place where I took gardening class, the Learning Garden at Venice High School. David King is the garden's caretaker, and he also runs the community garden program here. High schoolers take gardening classes here during the school year. But in the summer, this community garden is maintained by David and his neighborhood volunteers. Hey, David. Hey, Claire, hey. how's it going? Oh, it's great to see you. Lovely seeing you. What's been up to? Not much, just cooking and photographing the blog, that kind of stuff. It looks so different now than it did in January. You know, at this time of year, to have a bad looking garden, yeah. you're a bad gardener. <laughs> I must be a pretty bad gardener then. <laughs> oh, it sure can't be that bad. Well, the plots look fabulous, and I mean, school's out right now. Right. So who's ta it's not, this isn't all you, right? <laughs> no, um, people volunteer. Mm -hmm. They volunteer because they want to learn how to garden. Wow. We teach them a little bit of gardening, they take care of the plots. They get a harvest, whatever's in there. Ooh, lucky duck. It's a good payoff. <laughs> yeah, huh? definitely. What kind of people volunteer? I mean, are they complete green thumbs or are they novices? We get them all. Wow. We have some people that are completely beginners mm -hmm. and they couldn't tell a squash from a tomato. <laughs> but we have many people that come mm -hmm. out here. They're really yeah. accomplished gardeners. They know what they're doing. They just, they don't have a place to garden in their apartment. Wow. You know, tear out the living room, put it mm -hmm. in a planter box. <laughs> Doesn't work so well. Uh, but no, it's a great site to garden. I don't yeah. use any pesticides at all, even organic ones. Mm -hmm. And I don't use fertilizers at all, not even organic ones. Mm -hmm. I count on the compost and the worms and the critters of the soil to provide real fertility. By not spraying, mm -hmm. right, we end up with a lot of bugs. Yeah. We end up with a lot of bugs, we get an equilibrium. Mm -hmm. We lose sometimes, but mostly we win. Yeah. That's amazing. There's, it's, there's a fully functioning ecosystem exactly. here in the garden. And that's what we're striving toward. I wish I had a garden like this when I was in high school. I wish I had a garden like this when I was in high school. <laughs> this, is, this is spectacular. I mean, the students must learn so much being in a space like this. What do they take away? One of the things, of course, is just how to garden, mm -hmm. how food is grown. I love yeah. the one kid who was out here. The teacher was pulling out onions mm -hmm. and he goes, are you telling me this is where onions come from? <laughs> I mean, you know, to them, Tomatoes come from the store, yeah. or you know, onions in the store. Mm -hmm. One student said to me, "I'm not eating that. That's been in the dirt." <laughs> really? <laughs> but also beyond that, the taste is different. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you have a fresh pea, it's not the same as a can of peas. Yeah. But they get that chance here. You can tell that this is like a lot of noise around here. There's yeah. Venice Boulevard right out there. Mm -hmm. Walgrove over here is over impacted. Yeah. But still, this garden remains as a refuge. Everything looks beautiful. Can we go in and check it out? Let's do it. Okay. So here we are in the garden. Yeah, and right here is one of our great zucchinis. Oh, wow. Or you could take those squash flowers if you wanted and stuff them. Oh, I love that. Nothing like a fried squash flower. There you go. <laughs> hey. That's amazing. And so um, a zucchini is actually a type of summer squash. So you know why we call it summer squash? We grow both right now. Oh. Right? But yeah. summer squash is always for eating in the summer. Mm -hmm. Winter squash with a hard rind would keep into the winter. I did not know that, that you could grow them at the same time. I always thought it was just a winter vegetable. No, the hard rind will allow it to keep that's way amazing. into winter, yeah. and that's what people would eat. Pumpkins. Yes. Right, have hard rinds. Definitely. That's a squash. This is the best basil you can possibly grow. This is the mm. Genovese basil. It has a better, more robust flavor, a wonderful aroma. Oh, well that's for sure. And the aroma is what brings in the taste buds, right? Mm -hmm. We love having the students plant out herbs, basil included, 
because some herbs are even thrive on neglect. I should be growing herbs then. <laughs> That's right. Now, this is a tomato plant. It's a tomato plant. Oh my gosh. This is a big tomato plant, but look at this. This is an orange tomato called oh. tangerine. Oh my goodness. This is a good, really good, fresh eating tomato. I like the orange ones. They're sweeter to me. Mm -hmm. They have less acid. Yeah. Right? So they're really good in salads. Yeah. That sort of thing. We've got paste tomatoes, mm -hmm. like Roma. Okay. We've also got a striped Roman, which is uh, red and gold stripes oh. together. We have cherry tomatoes. We also have some other heirloom type tomatoes. There's so much ready to eat in the garden right now. I mean, what is it like for the community to have such just edible growth happening right here on their street corner? People need good, clean food. They need to learn how to grow it. And a lot of times, especially in lower income communities, you don't have the land available to you. Community Garden gives everybody a chance to garden, grow a little bit of their own food. So how do you get connected? If you find a Community Garden in your neighborhood, usually there's a way to contact them by phone or perhaps by email. You get on their waiting list if they have one, or if they don't, you get a join by paying a small amount of money. Usually it's very low. It includes the water for your garden and the space. For being here with you today, I'm just feeling very good that I might be able to attempt gardening myself. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you can do it. Ah, oh my gosh, I'm so... Taking a bite of this. So take a bite of it. Mmm. Oh, cheers. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> my journey continues as I visit a home garden expert to chat about fresh vegetables. Then it's off to the kitchen where I turn those vegetables into something delicious. Christy? Yes. Hey, I'm Claire. Hi, Claire. So nice to meet you. David from The Learning Garden sent me. Oh, thanks for stopping by. Oh my gosh, my pleasure. Well, David told me that you were the one to see for a new home gardener like myself. Oh, well, yes, I am a vegetable garden expert, and if you are trying to get started, I can give you a lot of tips on how to do that. I need a lot of tips, <laughs> so this is great, yeah. So I noticed you have a little orchard going on in your front yard. What are we looking at? Well, there are five fruit trees here, and they're all relatively young right now. This is a dwarf navel orange, wow. which has given us some great oranges so far. Um, and then back there, we have our little Meyer lemon tree. This is a kumquat, great for making uh, marmalades oh, and things like that. Yeah. And then we've got a Santa Rosa plum back here. Which I am so incredible. jealous of you. And over here, we have our nectarines. Wow, so much variety here. I've never seen fruit trees in a front yard as a landscaping choice. It's the most unique front lawn on the block, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you like this, you'll love the backyard, so let's go check it out. Great. All right. So how long have you had this garden for? This garden is four years old. We built the raised beds, we uh, worked on putting in good soil, and we started planting things. This is what you have. Ta-da! Yeah, wow. here we are. <laughs> I noticed that like the celery over here and the kale back there, they all are so full and... Well, yeah, actually some of the things, like the celery, for mm -hmm. example, is already past its prime, uh -huh. so it's what we call, it's gone to seed, or it's okay. bolted to seed. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've stopped picking it, it's sent up its center stalk, it sends out flowers, mm -hmm. and the flowers attract beneficial insects, mm -hmm. and then it sets seed, and we can collect the seed for either eating, consuming, or, or for planting for next year. All right, I have to ask, what is a beneficial insect? <laughs> <laughs> right, beneficial insects are, insects that actually help in your garden. Mm. So, for example, aphids are a pest. Well, ladybugs are a beneficial insect because they eat the aphids. Mm -hmm. And there are a ton of other beneficial insects that are attracted to your garden when you plant flowers that attract them. So, mm. it's part of your ecosystem. We use no chemical pesticides or herbicides or fertilizers at all. We well, use nature's pesticides, which are bigger bugs. Bigger <laughs> bugs, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so zucchini is the next thing on our agenda of easy plants for beginning gardeners to grow. Great. And this is actually a volunteer. I didn't plant this. Are you it, serious? <laughs> oh my gosh, what a pushy volunteer. I know, you know, but they do better than anything you cultivate yourself on purpose. So yeah. it's, as you can see, they're doing really well. So yeah. what you want to think about when you're growing zucchini mm -hmm. is that you need at least three feet of space because it's going to get big. I mean, look at the leaves, they're gigantic. Oh my gosh, I know, it's like prehistoric historic looking. <laughs> right. And as you can see, there are a lot of zucchini ready to pick. Yes. Okay, so since 
gardening is my expertise and cooking is yours, I feel honored to give you some of my zucchini to take with you so you can turn it into some fabulous dish, okay? Oh, I'm so excited. When you get a little more comfortable with gardening, I highly recommend homegrown asparagus. This is an asparagus plant, by the way. I can't believe that. It, I thought it was fennel fronds or something because it's so bushy and huge. Right, well, asparagus starts out the way that you see it in the grocery mm -hmm. store. So when you grow it, it starts out like this. Oh, yeah. And then, at some point, the tip actually, as it grows taller, the tip opens up, and then it becomes fronds like, oh like this. Oh my gosh. It's not difficult to grow, mm -hmm. it just takes a time commitment. And you're not actually supposed to harvest for the first three years that you grow it. Oh my gosh. That is, okay, that is definitely a commitment. So this is something that you're gonna work up to as you <laughs> become a little more, <laughs> more experienced. But for now, I'm gonna show you how to plant a simple salad garden that you can maintain at your apartment. Oh, that sounds perfect. Good. All right, Claire, I'm gonna set you up with a small, manageable garden uh, for your apartment. This amount of space seems manageable for me. <laughs> good, good. So you really need to have a good quality organic mm -hmm. potting soil. There's worm castings and chicken manure and bat guano and all of these things help your mm -hmm. garden grow better. And I know it sounds kind of weird. So say, they just touched that. <laughs> so um, this also has perlite in it, which is going to help with drainage. Mm -hmm. uh, in containers, you really need to have good drainage. Mm -hmm. So this container has holes on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so when you water it, the water should flow through and uh, nothing will die. Yes. <laughs> okay. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to set you up with what I call square foot gardening. Oh. It's a much more efficient way of growing things mm -hmm. for the small gardener. So mm -hmm. I do this for a lot of clients and I'm gonna do it for you today. Wow. In square foot gardening, you take a square and you cut it in quadrants mm -hmm. and then you put a hole in the center of each quadrant and those technically are six inches apart. Oh. So you've got one, two, three, four. So we're gonna take our starts from the, from the nursery okay. and usually you'll put them in your hands like this and then break apart the bottom just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that is going to encourage the roots to spread out as you ah. plant them. Let's pull apart some of the soil mm -hmm. and drop in our lettuce Fantastic. seedling and then backfill and compress it just ever so slightly with okay. your hand. All right, your turn. Go ahead and dig a hole. You're going to bury it back up to the same spot where the soil level okay. is here. Okay. And, then and then backfill with soil. Okay, and then just press it down a little bit. Compress it just a little. So then we're going to put in some colorful lettuces. Actually, I like this red romaine here. Oh, it's beautiful. Look Isn't at that. Gorgeous? Here, go for this it. This already looks impressive. Lovely. And I love all the different textures. Exactly. It'll so make a very pretty salad in the future. <laughs> and true, and you can also plant, along with your salad greens, you can plant arugula or mustard greens. Mm. And when you harvest this, mm -hmm. you're just going to pick the outside leaves. Mm -hmm. And then the centers will keep producing mm -hmm. all season long. You'll have salad greens from these four heads of lettuce for about two to three months. Wow. So combined with the drainage and not watering it too much, these should thrive. These will thrive. <laughs> yes. yes this this is, this is as close as you can get to a foolproof garden. Thank God. I need that. I am I'm a bit of a fool when it comes to gardening, so foolproof works for me. Yeah, well, I hope you enjoy your salad garden. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I promise to take as good care of it as I can. Okay, good. <laughs> this will probably be the best salad I've ever had. Next stop, the kitchen, where I try my hand at garden fresh lasagna that's out of this world. I'm back from the gardens with all of my fresh and beautiful produce and I'm so excited to get started and play around in the kitchen. I got really inspired to do sort of a twist on a classic lasagna. So I'm gonna be doing my fresh lasagna that utilizes all of those beautiful fresh textures and garden flavors. Fresh zucchini to kind of mimic the pasta by slicing it really thin. Fresh heirloom tomatoes, uh, some roasted cherry tomatoes, and then a denser pesto, which is a classic Italian sauce of just pine nuts or walnuts if you prefer, parmesan or any other hard Italian cheese you like, garlic, which is key. Perfect. And now I'm gonna add basil leaves. This is so key to the entire recipe. It just smells beautiful and has that really great garden fresh flavor. I'm gonna start drizzling some olive oil into it as well. I am not shy about seasoning, so I'm gonna start with a pinch of salt and then an equal amount of pepper. Oh, that smells so good. 
super simple and it definitely is a little more than we're gonna use. The great thing is pesto freezes really well. You can save it for later. So I'm gonna slice my heirloom tomatoes. And all that heirloom means is it's a tomato that's been grown from the seeds of years prior and in very small batches. So they have really good texture, beautiful flavor, and lots and lots of variety like we saw at the gardens. Next, I'm going to take my beautiful zucchini, slice it down the center, because then it's really easy to use on the mandolin. The mandolin is actually pretty easy to track down. I have found them in the home goods aisle of my local supermarket, so you could probably find one there. And the trick with a mandolin is you kind of want to bear claw your fingers so that you keep them protected as you go. And go slow at first. If you're not paying attention, you could hurt yourself and nobody wants that. The mandolin will thinly, thinly slice the zucchini so it's similar to a pasta. You can see right here, it's about the thickness of a pasta you'd get in lasagna and that's the idea. It's kind of acting like our pasta. I've taken my tomatoes out of the oven and all I did here was have some cherry tomatoes, toss them in a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and I put them face up on a parchment paper and stuck them in a 425 oven and cooked them for about 20 to 30 minutes. Because we're using so many fresh ingredients, you don't want it to taste like a salad. And using roasted tomatoes really brings in that cooked flavor that adds so much to it. Now I have everything ready to start layering my lasagna. I like to overlap them a little bit just so that when you cut through, they're not so separate. Next, I'm gonna add our pesto. This also acts as a really good glue to get the rest of your lasagna like stuck together in a good foundation. This is definitely a really rustic dish. Next, I'm gonna add some layers of tomato, another layer of zucchini. Now, I gotta add all of my beautiful roasted tomatoes. This is probably my favorite part of the dish. We're gonna sprinkle some basil onto this layer and the fresh basil just adds such a beautiful flavor. So we're doing the last layer of tomatoes and that same sort of rustic idea. It's supposed to look fresh and like it did just come straight from your own garden. A last little pinch of basil, whole leaves, the whole shebang. Hit it with a little bit of salt, fresh ground pepper, and then a drizzle of olive oil just to get some of that really delicious olive flavor in there. So there you have it, my fresh lasagna, my favorite way to eat garden vegetables. No dish with lasagna in the title is complete without garlic bread, at least to me. And what's a little different with this is I'm using roasted garlic rather than raw garlic. All I did was take some garlic cloves, put it in some aluminum foil, olive oil, pinch of salt, pinch of pepper, just left it in my oven at 425 for about 45 minutes next to the rosemary. I think it can sometimes overwhelm the flavor, so I just kind of keep it at a big pinch. And next is the chili flake. Same rule, if you love heat, you love spice, please add more. Next, the lemon zest. And the trick here, you don't actually zest the lemon, you lemon the zester. All you do is you take your lemon and you gently rub it against the zester. All you want is that really fine top layer of skin. It brings this really bright flavor so it doesn't feel super heavy when you eat it. All we have to do now is add our butter and mix it all together. So it's ready to pop in the oven, 350 for 10 minutes, just so everything gets nice and melted. And then you're gonna turn it to broil and you have to babysit it. I cannot tell you how many times I have burnt my garlic bread. So you just watch it for a minute and two until everything is nice and golden brown. Christy's coming over for dinner and I can't wait for her to see what I did with the great vegetables from her garden. So excited to share, I guess, your food <laughs> with you. All right, here goes. Yeah. Wow, Claire, this is fantastic. Really? Yes. Oh, great, I'm glad you like it. You've done my produce justice. Yay, I'm so <laughs> happy. I'm sure you have a lot more zucchini laying around your garden now. I mean, what do you do with so much extra? I love to shred it and put it into any baked good. Oh, so. Yeah. Chocolate zucchini bread is one of my favorites, also zucchini muffins, and you can also put it into a pureed soup. It's a good thickener in general for anything. So I know with tomatoes, the rules, you know, don't put it in the refrigerator, don't pick up any of the green parts. I mean, is it, so, is it sort of similar with zucchini as well? It is, you know, I don't store zucchini in the fridge myself. I like to keep it out on the counter. Um, somebody told me that once and I, I was like, it lasts for almost two weeks. So okay. if you can pick zucchini that has a little bit of the stem on it, it will hold up 
a little bit better too. I mean, you just see how important the quality of zucchini is in this dish. Because it's so fresh and in season, uh, we could I could slice it super duper thin and keep it really sweet and kind of tender. Hopefully it should kind of have the texture of an al dente pasta. It does, it's really perfect. I'm so oh. happy that you like it. And this garlic bread is really amazing too. I wanna eat the whole plate. <laughs> Please go for it. I do not need that much garlic bread hanging around my house. <laughs> but this is roasted so we can still talk to each other after oh, we good. eat it. Yeah. So you roast the garlic ahead of time and then... It's mostly just to keep it so it's super mild and sweet. And God, I need to stop eating These garlic really bread. really good. <laughs> <laughs>